Good Tuesday morning. We are in Passion Week. We're in the, the lead up to, to Easter. Uh, Easter is this coming Sunday. And in John chapter 18, you have some of the lead up under the, uh, the arrest and, and uh, uh, the conviction and crucifixion uh, of Jesus. Uh, at the beginning of the chapter, he, he has been in the Garden of Gethsemane praying with his disciples uh, as they exit the garden. Uh, there are some soldiers that have been sent by the high priest to arrest Jesus, and and uh, there's a confrontation uh, where uh, Jesus is in fact arrested. He's taken to the high priest. Um, accusations are made against him, and uh, they conclude that uh, uh, that Jesus is guilty of these accusations, and uh, they take Jesus ultimately to Pilate. Uh, Pilate was the uh, uh, the Roman governor of that province. He was the one that had had the authority uh, in that land. And uh, uh, they bring him unto Pilate in order that uh, they might secure a death sentence uh, against Jesus. And so uh, you, you have uh, Jesus being brought before Pilate. The accusations have been made unto him. And Pilate begins to question Jesus uh, about these accusations uh, he has, Pilate has some misgivings. He, uh, on a couple of occasions, says uh, under, the, under the, the, the Jews, why don't you just try him with your own law? And, of course, their, their response is, well, if we, if we try him, uh, then uh, it's not lawful for us to put any man to death. And, and uh, after Pilate confronts Jesus, he finds uh, no fault in him, but they still begin to plead for him uh, to, to crucify him. Uh, but at any rate, in, in, in this discourse uh, that they're having, uh, Pilate in verse 35 of John 18, uh, he said, am I a Jew? I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not into all this religious uh, uh, debating you have going on. Am I a Jew? Thine own na nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? I don't really fully understand your laws, your, your Jewish laws, uh, they've brought you unto me. What, what, what's this all about? What have you done? Jesus answered, well, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Uh, I'm not trying to overthrow the Roman government. That's, that's not my, my, my plan. That's not my, my immediate goal. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to, to lead an insurrection. My kingdom is far bigger uh, than any earthly kingdom. It's far bigger than just this, this plot of land uh, here in Israel. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? He, he heard the reality that he has a kingdom. Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And so Jesus makes it apparent that his kingdom is a kingdom of truth and, and that he, he literally came to bear witness unto the truth. And Pilate asks this, this, this question in the very next verse, in verse 38, that, uh, that uh, certainly has gotten great press over the years. Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? And quite honestly, that is, that is a great debate uh, that rages in our time and in our culture right now. Uh, there are those who, uh, who say that we really can't even know truth. There, there is no absolute truth. And, and the only absolute truth that there is is that we just can't know truth. And, and uh, there, there's great debate about, about truth and, and how you derive it. And, and uh, that uh, the truth has become a personal issue, a personal aspect um, I, I may have my truth, you may have your truth, they may be different uh, from one another, but they're truth nonetheless. And, and uh, at any rate, we live in, in an, interesting, uh, an interesting time and, and, and really a sad time uh, that, uh, that we, uh, we can't seem to agree on, on just some, some basic, simple aspects. Uh, even, to the, even in the sense, just, just with, with basic, simple things uh, in terms of God's creation and origin, we, uh, we struggle with, with just truth. Um, but there is some truth that, uh, that we better be certain of. There's some truth we better comprehend and understand. And, and um, 
uh, Jesus came uh, ultimately that he might bear witness unto the truth. He came to give us truth. He came to be the truth. Uh, he came ultimately to be the Savior of the world, uh, that we might know the truth and live in the truth. Uh, but 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 there's a couple of truths that, that that everybody needs to get a hold of, and one is the truth about sin. Earlier, back in in John chapter 15, uh, Jesus said something interesting. He said, "Listen, if I had not come in verse 22 and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin." You know, he said, "Listen, if if, if I hadn't come and been been proclaiming and preaching." Uh, then, then all these religious leaders and all these folks of this day, uh, they wouldn't have even known that they were in sin. They, they, they're trying to cloak and conceal their sin, but, uh, but I have revealed their sin unto them, and I, I've showed them their sin. Uh, prior to me, they, they just excused it away, but they can't do that anymore because, because the truth has revealed their sin. Quite honestly, a lot of folks just don't want to deal with God's truth because they want to continue to cloak their sin. Uh, they want to continue to live in deception as if as if somehow not not acknowledging something is going to make that that something go away uh, that that's absolutely ludicrous but 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 people think well if I never acknowledge it then it's just not true well well whether you acknowledge it or not truth is truth it's settled it's certain it's sure and and it doesn't depend upon our opinion of it uh, God's truth is is absolutely certain and there is a truth uh, about sin. And, and, and the truth about sin is, is that, that all of us are sinners. As a matter of fact, you, you, you find consistently through God's word that, that God pronounces us uh, as, as sinners. There's none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all failed to measure up to God's righteous standard. All of us have transgressed the law. All of us are, are sinners. And quite honestly, that, that sin, it goes all the way back uh, in, into the garden, the Adam of Eve. That, that was the, the origin or the cause uh, of sin. Uh, you, you find that uh, it started with, uh, with, with Adam and Eve when, when they transgressed, when they, they broke the only, the only rule, the only law God gave them was they couldn't eat of the fruit uh, of the tree in the midst of the garden. Well, they did that. And because they transgressed that one law, that one rule, then, then they became sinners. And, and all of us have been plunged into sin because that taint of sin has affected all of creation. Uh, that, that sin became part of, uh, of human nature. And uh, we were born with a sinful nature. And it's really almost a catch-22. We, we don't necessarily become sinners because we sin. We sin because we're sinners. And, and the reality is that sin is implanted uh, in us, and it, it, it comes that we, 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 uh, we, we inherit that. It's hereditary unto us, uh, but, but it, it, it stemmed ultimately from Adam and Eve in the garden. And so there's the, uh, the cause of sin, and the consequence is that sin separates. It separates us from God. It certainly did that with Adam and Eve. They were put out of the garden uh, where God would come and visit with them and commune with them every day. They no longer had that opportunity. As a matter, matter of fact, God... God made sure they didn't have access back into the garden and access uh, back into God's presence uh, in, that, in, in that certain sense where they enjoyed fellowship with him. And so it separated them from, from God's fellowship. It does the same with us. It separates us from the Lord. It, it separates us uh, from, from, from spending time with him, not only here, but ultimately in eternity. Uh, because of sin, we can't dwell with God forever in, in heaven. And so, so there had to be a remedy. God is holy, and uh, he's not going to allow sin into his presence. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. And so the consequence of sin, the wages of sin, the penalty of sin is death, eternal separation from God, uh, ultimately in hell, separation in this life, but ultimately separation in hell. But then you, you understand something from Scripture about sin's course. Uh, sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. And so the ultimate consequence uh, is, 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 is physical death and spiritual death, that eternal separation, the condemnation uh, and death that takes place, takes place. And so it's that second death, which is the lake of fire. And, and so the absolute truth for everyone concerning sin is, is we are all sinners and that that sin, it separates us from God. And then, then ultimately, our sin is going to condemn us to hell. And so there's the truth about sin. 
But secondly, there's a truth about salvation. And there are several things Jesus said in, in, in John chapter 3. Uh, John chapter 3, and John is a great book to, uh, to deal with salvation and to, uh, to understand what God says about salvation. But, 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 but a verse that I'm sure you're well familiar with. John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, the reality is this. There's salvation. It's available through God's Son that he sent to die on the cross in our stead. He loved the world so much, he didn't want us to perish and spend eternity separated from him. He sent his Son to die, to die for us. In John chapter 6 and in verse 51, the scriptures, Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. And again, he's framing it where, uh, where he wants them to understand that Jesus is, in fact, uh, the sacrifice that was necessary to provide salvation for the world. In John chapter 11, uh, Lazarus has passed away. Jesus shows up to console and comfort uh, his sisters. All of it is part of God's plan. He tarried a few days before he went. Uh, he didn't want to heal him. He wanted to resurrect him. But when he does show up, uh, he's confronted by Martha, and, uh, and she says unto Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother hadn't died. Hadn't died. And, uh, and Jesus says to her, your brother's going to rise again. And she says, well, I know that. I know he's going to rise one day in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said something interesting in verse 25. He said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then he confronts her with this question, believest thou this? Do you believe this, Martha? Do you really believe that? And, and, and so Jesus points out, listen, I'm the one who ultimately brings salvation. I'm the one who brings life, spiritual life. I'm the one who brings that e eternal life. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And, and, and so again, Jesus is reaffirming the reality that, that he is the way to salvation. Can I tell you something? Uh, salvation is not an issue of righteousness, at least not our righteousness. It's the issue of Christ's righteousness, but, but not ours. Uh, the reality is all of our righteousness is as filthy rags in God's sight. Uh, any, anything we do, anything, anything good that we do, the best we can do, it stinks unto the Lord. Uh, it's filthy unto God. We are not righteous. We're sinners. And uh, even if we started doing righteously from this moment forward, if we could live a perfect life from this moment on in your life, you still have a past that has to be settled. You still have transgressions in the past that need to be dealt with. And, and quite honestly, uh, it's not just an issue of, of us turning over a new leaf and being good people and trying to live a good moral life. That's not, that, that's not what Christianity is all about. Christianity is about Jesus living that perfect life, dying that sacrificial death, and imputing unto us his righteousness for our sinfulness. It's him imputing unto us his sacrifice in payment for our sin debt that we might be set free uh, from what we owed unto God. And so it's not just an issue of righteousness. It's not just, it's not just becoming good people. Uh, we, we, our, our, our life changes. We're transformed by the power of the gospel. But, but we don't just become good people and turn over a new leaf and just change our ways. And, and that's what, what secures salvation for us. If, if, if we could do it by our own righteousness, then Christ died in vain. It's not an issue of religion. Uh, he didn't come just to make religious people. He came to make people that had a relationship with him. And that relationship comes through faith in Jesus Christ. We turn from our sins, trusting in the sacrifice of Christ, and allowing God to do his work in, in saving us and transforming us and, and restoring that relationship that was lost in the fall of mankind. And so this week, uh, we celebrate Jesus going under the cross, uh, his death that took place on the cross, but his resurrection that followed three days later, securing eternal life for us. And so what is truth? The truth is this. We are sinners that needed salvation but God loved us so much 
he provided that salvation, that if we'll reach out and, and receive it by faith from Jesus Christ, we can have a renewed relationship with God and eternal life uh, that, uh, that God will welcome us into his presence one day for all of eternity to be with him. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. God, it, it is certainly uh, incredibly apparent uh, at this time of the year as we celebrate uh, your, uh, your willingness to go to the cross. Uh, we, we celebrate, Lord, your resurrection. Uh, it's apparent unto us how much you love us and, and how much we mean to us. Father, thank you for giving your son. Lord Jesus, thank you for being, being willing to come. And Holy Spirit, I'm grateful that you're willing to dwell within us and, and to continue to work in us daily and conform us into your image. Thank you for your wonderful work. I do pray, God, if there's somebody that, that doesn't know you, you'd use this truth to just transform their life. Help us to embrace your truth. And uh, Lord, we know that when we live in your truth, uh, that Father, we will be blessed indeed and we'll be well-pleasing unto you. Lord, just give us, uh, we pray, a great week this week as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Uh, meet in our services as, uh, as folks gather together in churches all across this land and all around the world as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you be exalted, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a great week. Uh, I hope that we'll just continue to celebrate uh, what, what Jesus did for us and uh, that we'll walk in the truth, live in the truth, we'll celebrate the truth. I hope you find a, a great church this Sunday and uh, you, you spend time uh, worshiping the Lord and acknowledging him and honoring him and in communion and fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. I, I, I hope it's a great day of celebration this Easter Sunday. Uh, we start at 10 a.m. our preaching service. We have Sunday school at 9 if you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to come and celebrate the resurrection of Christ with us. It's going to be a great day, and we would love to have you. And uh, hope you have a great week, and God bless you. We love you, and so does the Lord.